Google now let AI to create your AI agents. This is about the new visual agent builder of Google ADK or Agent Development Kit that let you create your AI agents using another AI which you just prompt what you need and AI agents created for you without you any coding. And of course you can do drag and drop if you want and test the agents again without any coding. In this video I'm going to show you how this works and how you can start using it and installing it in action. Let's check it out. Google ADK or Agent Development Kit. This is an open source package recently released by Google for creating AI agents in Python, Go, and Java. But as of now, you can create your agents using Google ADK, but without any coding because they just released their visual agent builder. And not only you just literally drag and drop and select from the visual UI that are going to show you that you create your agents. They also added an AI assistant on the right side that you can just chat and ask Gemini what agent you want an agent builder will create that for you so you will see your agent visualize and you can test it on the fly so i can show you in action but in case if you are new to google adk and you don't know what it is you have never caught that before that's fine but i would highly recommend you to check out my very complete video about through all details of what it will be okay i will add it to the top right of the screen here and also in the video description check that out you will have much thoughtful understanding of what it will get okay and then here's the secondary feature of google adk which is uh, the visual pillar. All right, how we can install and using it. Given that it's open source, you just need to simply do pip install Google ADK. That's it. And given that I have already done so before recording this video, so I'm not going to run it again. But as soon as you install successfully, you simply need to just type ADK web. Now, when you type ADK web, it will open up its UI for you internally on a port. But because I want to specify the port by myself, I added that here. But you don't need to. You can just simply type ADK web. You are good to go. I hit on enter. So what it does is launch a local URL for me. If I click on it, which is open here right now, I can now see the actual welcome page to ADK. So you can see that on the right, I can select agents. If you have already created agents before, you can test them right now here, whether you have created them through code or UI, they all come here. And I can see I've created some before recording this video. But to show you how, you just simply click on this plus icon here. It will ask you that, hey, give me a name. Let's say I want to create a deep researcher agent because they want to just follow uh, the demo that they released in the blog. All right, seems like it doesn't like the space here. So let me just remove and we can create. There you go. So you can see that on the right side, it is actually empowered by Gemini that I can literally chat to ask questions about how to create AI agents here with ADK or let this AI assistant create that for me properly. So before I actually ask this AI assistant to create my agent, I want to press forward with your walkthrough on capabilities here, and then we will let the AI assistant here to create our AI agent. So on the left side, because I just typed my agent name, so initially it started with the root agent, but you can also switch the model that you want. So far, Flash and Pro Gemini has been supported, but in the code, I know that you can also have non-Google-based models as well because it's an open source package. Then obviously any AI agent has its own instruction or prompt, you give it here. And optionally, you can provide some description about this AI agent. And each AI agent can be connected to a couple of things, can be connected to tools, can be connected to sub agents. So if you click on the plus icon here, you will see the options that comes here. You can connect it to another LLM. Let me actually remove it, which is an LLM agent. You can connect it to a sequential agent. That means couple of agents sequentially in a loop followed by each other will execute a task so you know that always agent one do something then agent two and then agent three and then you add sub tasks in a sub agents in a sequential manner but if you don't want to be to, to be sequential you can have it in a loop for example in my deep research agent i want to have the agents in a loop that one agent does research another agent refine the outcome of the research and then they go and do another research so it's sort of a loop that I specify after maximum how many iterations or what's the exit criteria that these agents will get out of that continuous loop. So that's another way of calling one agent from another agent. What is next? You can have parallel agent. That means agent, sub-agent four here in parallel will be run in different agents that I specify here. So agent one, two, three in parallel, they can do the task before, without waiting for each other because they're totally independent. That's another way to specify sub agents here. So these are sort of, if you want to connect it to another agents and how they work together, but you can also connect to tools. So when I specify tools, it can be a function tool. That means you need to specify a Python code, a Python code that do something or a Python code that calls an API and you specify that function tool here or ADK comes within some built-in 
tools. So if you click on that on the fly without any coding, you can connect to Google search engine. So your agent will use it as a tool without you coding anything. Uh, enterprise web search, Vertex, if you're a Vertex user, Vertex search can be used as a tool here. A lot of different things like memory, file retrieval, you can see on my screen that these are supported so you don't need to code or add any third party service for being able to utilize these codes. And then what is callbacks? So if you want to put some guardrails before you call an agent, you want to check ABC, It's if it's there, do not call that agent. So these are guardrails that you can have before agent or after the agent. You can do the same thing before calling a model or after calling a model. And even before calling a tool by an agent and after calling a tool by an agent. So it's really up to you to specify those callbacks or God will be better to say that you can have more flexibility on defining when what to be called based on passing my criteria. It's not a must to have. It's a, a nice feature, but if you don't want, it's not really a must to have for having your agents being function. And these are, as of another recording video, are the main components support on the left. So I could really start building my agent as is with the components I showed you. Or on the right side, we have this nice AI assistant that I'm going to ask to create my AI agent. All right, I just pasted my prompt. You can see that I'm asking that I want to create a research agent that uses Google search. And again, there's a built-in tool, so I don't need to create any API or something. And these agents should accept some research topics from the user and then pass it to another special sub agents that they do some analyzing, they refine the search query, so on and so forth. So I have a specified couple of stages that I need to have these sub agents working together. And after just passing it through this assistant, which is powered by Gemini Flash 2.5, you can see that it gave me the plan that, hey, I want to create a root agent and this root agent will be connected to a research loop agent, that loop I told you about. Then there's another agent that refine the queries that go to the internet and get the response back. And then we have another agent that execute that query to go through Google search. So it says that if you're okay with the design, um, I want to go with as is. So go ahead. I'm fine with the plan. You might question since you're waiting for this, how Gemini got authenticated here, how I'm paying for this, or where is Gemini study coming in? So if I go back to my actually terminal here, you can see that it's working on the back end. You need to authenticate to your uh, Google uh, Vertex AI if you if you want to use Gem Gemini from there, or provide your Google AI Studio key to be able to use all these features like the AI Assistant here if you want to use it. For example, in my case, I wanted to use Vertex AI to authenticate to use Gemini from Vertex. So I needed to just provide my uh, project ID in the terminals that I did this before actually recording video and then just type in gcloud command line for authentication. It pops up my browser and asks me to authenticate my ask my uh, credentials and then in the terminal it got authenticated. So after that, we just type in ADK web in the terminal as I showed you. It didn't ask me for further authentication. I had this AI assistant and everything working properly. All right, getting back to this visual builder, we can see that when I asked that, hey, go ahead and find with the plan, it's giving me that, hey, this is a high level architecture that I want to create the agents for you. So you can see that it's giving me the hierarchy of the agents. You will have this root agent that calls other agent. And by the way, it's going to create a YAML file for me that contains information of about this agent, name, the tool they're using, the description. So you can use it for your CICD pipelines or later on share this agent created to another developer. So you're not locked into just this UI and the visual capabilities of that everything created here there's a yaml component on the back end and you can see that which model has been selected for which sub agent or agents so it says me that hey i want to create these yaml files for you that describe your different agents as i just talked about it and i am fine with it yes go ahead so this time i assume if it doesn't have any follow-up question it should go ahead and create that uh visual components for me here so i can start just really testing my ai agents without me actually creating or developing it while you're reading i'm gonna show you the one i created using the same prompt before recording this video to save some time but that one gonna be created after a couple of minutes so you can select the one that you just created based on the name you chose and then after clicking on save that i showed you here you can see this is actually the ui that i can start chatting with the agent again without me quoting anything so i just want to say hi to make sure it's working so it's asking for my uh query so let's say i want to just simply ask give me some stock market or if you hit enter. And a nice thing about Google ADK is that as soon as I hit enter, not only it shows me the results, but also it shows me the interaction between agents and tools and how they're calling each other. So let's say with after just hitting enter to my 
uh, initial query it asked me it showed me actually transfer to the research agent visually i can see how these sub agents are calling each other and at the same time i can see the responses on some metadata which is amazing for further evaluation of how the agents are working and then it is refining some queries responding back to me with the web search results and the citation then that loop which is refining in three iterations because that's the number added in the prompt it is keep getting these results better and better and finally i have this report that's showing to me with the references so again nice thing you can have this is that within this interaction you can see the request going to each sub agent and the response getting back from each sub agents now i told you about the fact that when you use this ui builder it generates the code on the back end as well so let's check that out here you are, you can see that on the researcher, which is the name we chose, actually this is the one I chose before recording the video to create agent, has created a couple of YAML files. These are the ones that we confirmed that when AI assistant wanted to create. So let's say I want to click on query refinement agent. You can see that what's the instruction, what it does, what's the model, and if they're using any tool, what is the tool here, name here. Same here for the research. And remember too, we have an iteration of the loop of how many times we go and search internet. Three has been added here because I asked AI assistant to put three, but you can be modified, or even ask different number from AI assistant. And the same thing for other agents. All right, that was a quick overview of what is this new visual be there for Google ADK. I personally believe Google ADK framework is amazing. I honestly use the most compared to other frameworks. Let's say Lama Index, Langchain, Autogen, Croya. There are a lot and ton there. But Google ADK is the one that I've been recently really stuck with it because it has really everything that I need to have uh, production grade, really agent creation. For the builder, I would say this UI feature is getting involved. I see some missing components, like for example, I want to add tools on the fly without coding or having MCP server stuff. But I believe this is a great start and accelerate the design of your agents and we just drag and drop it, especially if you're not familiar with coding and you don't want to deal with the code at the beginning. This is, I think, a great way to start and you can test your agent on the fly as I did, again, without any coding, which is a great advantage. I hope you found this video helpful. If yes, I would be very thankful if you click that like icon and make sure to share your thoughts, questions in the comment section below and subscribe so you won't miss the next video. Thank you so much.